The following program contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. We're back and joining us in the audience is Amanda, who was a victim of body brokering at a center in South Florida. Hi, Amanda, thanks for joining us and Hi. thanks for sharing your story. I can't even imagine what that must have been like for you. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience? Yes, um, honestly, it's awful. Like, right when you go in there, you don't expect it to be like everyone using, everyone's getting high, you know, you find, you're finding needles everywhere. They're picking on the weak and sick, and they know exactly which ones to go to. They know exactly which ones are gonna take the money and go to, go to detox, you know, take the offers. And I even was overdosing, like I overdosed a couple times in, in this facility, and thank God, like I'm, I'm still here, you know what I mean? And it's just terrible, just everyone is just so sick and suffering and nobody's getting better. It's just the cycle over and over and over again. And when you're caught in that cycle, how do you ever break free? How do you snap to and realize that you're being victimized and you're never ever going to escape unless you overdose for good? And that's the thing, and that's why these places are, are that's why these places are so bad because you it's like you can't get out of those places when you're but already you sick. Like I did, thank you God, did. because I was yeah, I hit that point where I just couldn't take it anymore, you know. I couldn't I knew that if I stayed there, I was either gonna die or it was just gonna be the same insanity over and over again. Amanda, we know that a lot of these facilities, the way they get away with this is they isolate the patients from their families. They take their cell phones, they cut off all communication. Did that happen in the facility you were in? Um, not like the cut off with the cell phones and stuff like that, but you know, I was getting high like every day anyway, so it's not like I was calling anyone, you know what I mean? And they did hold my medications though. That was one thing. I didn't like that either, them cool. holding my medications because, for example, like I'm stable on my medications as much as I could be, and they don't and care uh, about you. They just care about did, the money, not How you. did this center find you, or did you find them? Um, I actually got referred to it by a friend who, she was actually doing good at the time, and I don't think her reason for me going there was to hurt me, you know what I mean? But when I got there, it was just... She referred it to me and drove me there. She actually got paid for driving me there, so she got money, yeah. <laughs> wow. Did you, yeah. Have, did you have good insurance in place also? Yes, I had private insurance. My uh, parents work for the city in Massachusetts, and um, great insurance. What finally got you off drugs? My friend, uh, Jessica, passed away last year. Um, she passed away July 16, 2016. She wasn't found. She was actually in one of these flop houses, not mine, but and she was with a couple friends from there, and they left her there. She died in the car and was found three days later. Yeah. The next day was when I, I made the decision to, like, I can't have my parents go through that, because she was just, like, such a beautiful person, you know? <laughs> it's so disgusting, I think, why they're so frustrating is because you want medical insurance to cover treatment for people who have should. addiction. Yeah. We shouldn't be locking people up and criminalizing drug addiction. We should be treating drug addiction and giving people rehab and access yes. to medical care. But places that take advantage of it make it really difficult for us to continue as a country to fight for and to be advocates for this kind of treatment. Amanda, are you sober now? I am actually. I've been sober since July um, 20th, 2016. Yay. <laughs>